Okay, this point happens when alpha is 0, and this point happens when alpha is 1. When alpha is between, when alpha is between 0 and 1, what's gonna happen? We can conceptually think about three cases. Maybe this straight line over here. Straight line. Not if it's straight line, but let's assume it's straight line. Case two. Who knows? We have this one. Okay. Third case. Which color? Mm, purple. Okay. Purple. Third case, maybe like this one. Which is right. Okay. First, let's think about this blue line. Well, if we have this blue line, as we form the portfolio, as we form this portfolio, well, actually, this portfolio actually destroys somehow value, right? For example, let's assume this is the half point, half point, half point. But you get a half point. If we let's assume this is point when suppose we have this one and let's say it is R pi is 0 0.5. Suppose we have half of asset one and half of asset two, and that generates portfolio risk in the purple somewhere here. Then what does that mean? It means that it destroys value because let's think of this hypothetical case. We toss coin, okay? We toss coin such that when we have head, we hold this at, okay? And when we have tail, we hold this at, right? We are simply tossing the coin, right? This way. And then we can expect some. So if we toss coin and head, we have only asset one. If it is tail, only asset two. Or uh, alternatively, we can roll the dice, roll a dice, and when we have an odd number, we have only asset one. If we have an even number, we have only asset two. Well, let's think about that kind of investment strategy. If we have that kind of investment strategy, we have somewhere here, right? Because it's a linear combination, linear combination of two case with probably half. So we have this one. So if we form the portfolio and the sum is richer, it destroys value because rather than holding this portfolio, we become much better by simply rolling the dice or toss coin and hold either this one and this one as that depending on the realized value. Right? We can do much better than this one by to simply tossing the coin, right? So if if we, have the, if we form portfolio alpha zero and one and if we have blue line, it actually destroys value of the investment. It is bad, right? You become much better. Simply choosing portfolio with probabilistically. Right? So we can, in the textbook, we usually rule out this case. But in reality, actually, but in reality, sometimes we have this one, surprisingly. Can you guess when we have this profile, when we hold, combine this, this, and two assets, can you guess when this thing can happen? Well, this thing can happen, in fact, in reality. Suppose this is a form, stock of the form one, Actually, it's form two. Stock of the form two and stock of the form one. And suppose they do M and A. They become one company, and we know empirically we know that many M and A fails. Right? Many M and A fails, which means that when two company become simply one company, and they reach this one. That actually destroys value, destroys shared value. Right? So now students should remember that when there is an M and A, suppose there is a big company, two big companies merge each other, or suppose we have a large firm and it acquire another firm, arguing that well we want diversification, we want acquire. Suppose we have a electronics company, suppose we electronic company, and suppose that electronics company go to 
bakery, making bread. Well, maybe one possible argument is that we are an electronics company and we want to diversify. So we want to enter a bakery company in order to do diversification. Well, that sounds good idea in one perspective, but we have to think in terms of portfolio. If these two company becomes one company, electronics company becomes to the business also bakery companies. Maybe who knows that may reach here. And it is very likely that, in fact, it is likely that the combination of electronics company and bakery company will reach somewhere here because, you know, electronics and bakery is a totally different area. Doing good in electronics does not mean that doing good in bakery. Actually, maybe the other way around. So in the case, when electronics company acquire bakery company, who knows, they will reach somewhere here. In the case, it becomes worse. It destroys shareholder value. From the perspective of shareholder, well, diversification is good. In the case, we can simply hold stock of the bakery company and stock of the electronic company. That's much better. We can do our own diversification at home. CEO of the electronics company or CEO of a bakery company, they should do their own work. We do our diversification or M&A in our own portfolio. Then may be smarter. They don't have to do the diversification. Actually, from you know what, from the perspective of the shareholders, like a stock analyst, like stock investors, us, we don't want diversification in the firm level. We want each firm specialized or focus in their own area, and we want each firm excel at their own area. And for diversification, we can form our diverse portfolio at home. That is maybe much better. To summarize, although it is not usually covered in textbook, when two firm becomes one firm, which is similar to forming a portfolio, they may end up here, and which destroys shoulder value, right? Because it is worse than simply tossing a coin, right? We toss the coin and if we have realization, we hold the this one, this one. Then we have, at least we can guarantee this line. At least we can guarantee this line. So, because it is not corporate finance class, here, let's remove this line. Okay? No, this line is not, this line is itself interesting and very interesting topic in corporate finance. But because this is the, I want to focus on investment strategy, so let's ignore this one. Now let's focus on this straight line. Again, I already explained this straight line. This we can generate this straight line with basically with uh, some random number. Suppose we want this point. Suppose we want this point. Suppose we want this point. And then this is the 0 0.7, and this is the 0 0.3. Uh, well, mm, yeah, something like that. Yeah, let's create something like this one. Well, how to create this this realization? This is easy. This is pretty easy. Just take Ryan and then put. This is easy. Okay, we generate random number. We do some lottery, some lottery, and with lottery, with a 70 percent probability, with a seventy probability chance of probability, we hold the stock one. Now, from one, let's change stock one, and this is stock two. With a seventy percent chance, we hold this one. And with the thirty percent chance of this one, simply randomly, then we can reach this one. So it is very easy. Okay? We, we don't have to form portfolio. We can. We just need some random number generator, which generates seventy percent with this one, thirty percent of this one. So if we the random number, with the seventy percent of time we hold this one, with thirty percent of time we hold this one, we can reach exactly here, right? So we can form this one. So this straight line means basically there's no 
point of portfolio making. There is no port point of portfolio construction. There is no benefit of the diversification or no benefit of constructing portfolio because we can generate any point in this line with some probability. And then we can go back to the previous uh, lecture note over here. Let's think about this portfolio variance. This is important. So uh, let's think about this one. Can I copy this one? Mm. Copy, no, it does not work. So suppose, let's uh, suppose the lowest one. So let's write down this one again. Again. Here. Let's make more space more space. We have a very interesting case over here. Sigma p square is 1 minus alpha square, right? Sigma 1 square plus 2 rho alpha 1 minus alpha sigma 1 sigma 2 plus alpha square, sigma 2 square, when alpha is 1, okay? Let's think of the what's going to what will happen. When alpha is 1, correlation we means that two asset is perfectly correlated. So when one asset goes up by 30%, the other asset goes up like 30%, something like this, okay? So when alpha is 1, this is 1, so it becomes basically 1 minus alpha square, sigma square, plus, now it is 1, so alpha, 1 minus alpha, sigma 1, sigma 2, plus alpha square, sigma 2 square, which is simply 1 minus alpha, sigma 1, plus alpha, sigma 2 square, okay? So, therefore, therefore, sigma p, is simply a linear combination of two standard deviations, right? Because we know the square. Well, this is very interesting because this expected value is already linear combination, right? Already linear combination. And when R when correlation one, this standard deviation is also linear combination. So if we just combine these two then when alpha is 1, basically in this lecture, in this previous figure, well, we have to get, get the same line because this point, this entire line is a linear combination of this mu and mu2 in linear combination of this. So, which means that, which means that when rho is equal to 1, we have exactly this point, this line. Right? This is very interesting. So two assets is perfectly correlated with each other. If we form portfolio, it becomes straight line. And that you can generate also that straight line with chance, with probability, with some random number. Therefore, when rho is 1, there is again no point of portfolio diversification. If we do the portfolio diversification, we can reach the point as good, only as good as the probability choice of the asset. Therefore, it means that when rho is 1, there is no benefit of the portfolio diversification. This is very intuitive, this is interesting. Well, this is also very intuitive because when rho is 1, two assets is perfectly correlated. If we have perfectly correlated two assets, one asset goes up, the other one exactly goes up that amount, then what's the point of holding two assets, right? There is no benefit of diversification. So you get to click this in line with our intuition. Now, lastly, when rho is less than 1, and rho, you know, rho is always okay. 1, and remember, and then minus 1, when rho is between plus and minus 1 when we have something like this. It is easy to prove, right? Now, easy to prove because 
right let's go back to this one now we don't need this one so let's delete this one actually um Actually, what we can do is we can do much better than that. We can uh, select this entire thing, okay, and then copy, and then add to the next page, right? That may help you, okay. And because we saved this, and we can uh, delete the case, then perfect correlation, case of perfect correlation, row is one. Right. Okay, and then let's blow up this again. Okay, now when Louis absolute value Louis less than one, we can easily prove that this is greater than. This is greater than. Let's recycle this one. Recycle this one. Right? Currently, this is the same, but if we delete this one, right? Actually, this is the greater than this one. Right? Because rho is between less than 1 minus 1, so this one should be actually, this one is the other way around. Right? If you compare this one and this one, this one is less than 1, this should be less than this one. Right? This should be less than this one. Less than this one, right? When we this one hold, this entire thing is less than this one, which is the again, which is as we shows this is simply one minus alpha sigma one plus alpha sigma two, which is if we take root, this is straight line, right? Straight line, right? Here it is straight line. So if we form portfolio, then for each point we can achieve lower risk right this is lower this is less than this one so we can achieve lower variance so when low is between minus one and one we can actually achieve lower variance so it should be something here when low is smaller and smaller this one is bigger and bigger right when low is small, we have bigger and bigger in this case we really have a benefit of portfolio diversification because by simply choosing one asset probabilistically, we can only achieve this one and we cannot achieve this one. But if we if we construct a portfolio, we can generate this one. So for given mean, given expected return, for given expected return, given expected return, right? By forming portfolio, we can achieve this small risk than this one. So we can generate, we can reduce risk by this amount by forming the portfolio. This is very interesting. This important result. Again, we can again relate this idea into corporate finance. Again, suppose two firms like electronics company acquire bakery company and they become one. But uh, interestingly, let's watch the CEO of the electronics company. CEO of the electronics company have some knowledge of the bakery. Maybe he is very good at bakery. And by forming portfolio, maybe they can create some value. However, if they combine the entity, combine the entity of electronics company and the bakery company, if they combine the entity is somewhere here, somewhere here, let's somewhere here, it indeed creates value. It indeed creates called a synergy. Okay? It creates synergy between electronics company and bakery and much better than separate company. However, from the perspective of a shareholder, still it is not good enough. Okay? Not good. Although there is a synergy, that synergy is smaller than for benefit of portfolio diversification. Portfolio diversification. Even if there is synergy, when at home by holding two assets together, we can much better than that M and A. Right. So remember, when from 
from this moment, when you read the newspaper, when two companies announce M&A and they argue that there is synergy in the two companies, you have to, you can always ask the question, well, is that synergy created enough? Is this, that synergy created enough so that, great enough so that that synergy compensate the lost opportunity of the portfolio diversification. If two companies become one company, when we cannot do portfolio diversification, therefore the synergy should be great enough to cover this whole area. Okay. Let's take a break and continue.